All right, welcome to you. Uh, if this is the, uh, the the last one before Christmas, the last live student of the gun public show before Christmas, and then we're going to take the uh, the time between Christmas and New Year's. We're going to be dark. We're going to be slightly darker black during that time. We're going to be slightly darker black. Uh, we've got a Durkoat finished firearm moment for you guys and uh bullet points and all kinds of stuff talk about uh oh the uh a woman shoots carjacker with his own gun yes that is a story that we're definitely want to get into and uh the uh the house just passed a bill that rescinds the covid poison mandate for our military but is it a little bit too little too late i don't know we'll talk about that uh, here on today's Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle. And your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It is time for another one. Hope you guys are having a good week. Um, good pre-Christmas season. Hope you've taken a little bit of time to relax and watch some Christmas movies with your family. Snuggle up on the couch under a blanket and watch some Christmas movies. There you go. Oh, if you've got questions, we've got answers. If you're in the Discord channel, uh, good on you. You can always go to studentofthegun.com slash Discord and get in there and kibitz with your fellow Student of the Gun friends. And uh, we have lots of folks in there. Do we, we don't have any questions yet, do we? Do we have any questions uh, that, we didn't, that we didn't answer previously? I don't think so. You guys nope. monitoring? Which one of you two was monitoring Me. the Discord? Me. You were? Okay. Hi. All right. But, uh, yeah, Discord is a place that you can go to uh, kibitz with your fellow student of the gun uh, listeners if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to be a part of that group, that club. We encourage you to do so. And, of course, that is where you go to watch the show being produced live. What are we... Are we talking about coffee there? We're talking about coffee. Yeah. There's so many coffee companies right now. I don't even know where to go. So many, so many 2A type coffee companies. Apparently that's a, is that a, a gay coffee company? Huh? They have a rainbow what are you talking about? flag on their oh, the rainbow thing. I don't, I don't know think so. Oh, okay. We're just looking through the uh, general chat in our, grad program only chat general chat on studentofthegun.com slash discord scrolling through and seeing what's up it's the general chat oh man i don't know why i just got struck with the yawns oh i don't know i don't, I don't know what i'm Woo. gonna do here it's struck with the yawns but uh well let's go ahead and talk about we talked about black talk about um, bruno talked about bruno we're not gonna talk about bruno we're gonna talk about duracoat but it um bum 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 Watching that video reminds me that I did not kill nearly as many prairie dogs this last year as I could have or should have. I kind of got ripped off this year. We're gonna we'll make up for it next year though, definitely. Hmm. They're all in hibernation now. They're all hiding underneath the snow now. But uh, fear not, they'll be out. And if you guys like to uh, shoot guns, if you like to do winter gun projects, that's the thing about doing a gun build is often you you will procure pieces and parts whether it's four ends stocks grips uppers lowers all that stuff you procure all these different parts from different manufacturers there's nothing wrong with that then you put them all together and they don't quite match you know you have one that looks like it's kind of a parkerized and then you have another one that looks like it's black and then you have a barrel that looks more grayish 
uh, or barrel blue or whatever. And so you have this kind of muddled finished gun project. And that's fine. I mean, it probably works just fine. It doesn't matter. But if you want it all to be the same color, well, you want it to be the same color, then uh, you can pop over uh, to Duracoat Firearm Finishes. That's Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Uh, or you can follow studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. Yes, indeed. And pop over there, and they have pretty much every color under the sun. Close your eyes. Imagine a color. Now open your eyes back up, and they have that color. They have that color. But if you don't want to get fancy, you're like, I don't care about blues and greens and pinks and purples and yellows and oranges. I don't, I don't care about all that. I just want a standard black gun. I want to. So our recommendation to you is that you go ahead and pick yourself up a can of slightly darker black. That's right. If you go to the Duracoat palette, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different shades of black, combat black, French army black. <laughs> I didn't know that was a, there's a French army black, the German flectar black, gloss black, matte black, Remington black, but the greatest black of them all is slightly darker black. That's right. The student of the gun, slightly darker black. And that came about as a, uh, well, it was a, an idea that we had that we shared with our buddies at Duracoat. And we said, hey, how about we do this? And they said that. They said, Paul, you're a daggum genius. <laughs> you're a daggum genius. We're going to do that. And so it exists if you would like to tell your friends and neighbors and coworkers and and so forth that your gun is actually they're like oh when did you put that black coating on there you're like it's actually slightly darker black and if you don't get that joke well i'm sorry but it's not a joke you're like i said this is really a joke right they don't actually have slightly darker black oh contraire mon frere it even says it on the label that's right. It says it on the label. It says slightly darker black. And you can get that right now. You can get it in the can and can technology, or you can get it if you're a fancy dude. If you actually went to the uh, Duracoat University and you know how to do it with an air, air compressor and uh, airbrushes and stuff like that, uh, you can buy just the liquid and the hardener and you can mix it and so on and so forth. If you don't have all that, that's cool, too. It's cool, too. You can get it in a can, a can and can technology, and it's ready to go. Bing, bang, boom. Bob's your uncle, and then you're, you're going to work. You're going to work. All right. So uh, I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. Sometimes I feel like, well, everybody already knows because we already talked about it three years ago, and so everyone certainly knows because everyone who's listening today was listening three years ago. That's not necessarily False. true. It's not necessarily true. Be like, uh, what was that guy's name from the office? Who? With the hair, the hair in the middle. The, the hair in the, the middle. Yeah, he goes false. False. Oh, it's Dwight. Yeah, Dwight. That was his name. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, so uh, check out our buddies at Duracoat Firearm Finishes, and if you are going to be at the, if you're a gun dealer. Uh, or a member of the industry, and you're going to be at the Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show coming up here in one month, exactly one month from the moment that we speak the words into this microphone, we will be uh, in Las Vegas, and uh, we will be at the Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show. And while you're there, make sure you go by the Duracoat booth and thank them for sponsoring Student of the Gun. That is your responsibility if you're going to be at the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show. Now, if you're not going to be there, well, you can still thank them. You can thank them on social media, or you can just, when you place an order, and say, the reason I'm here is because Student of the Gun sent me. You do that. 
Man, I tell you what, uh, SDS imports the makers of 1911s and shotguns, and they also uh, produce the PX9 Generation 3 pistols. And we did uh, last year, last summer, uh, we did a essentially a 1,000 round torture test on a PX9 Gen 3 duty pistol, right? Ran it through its paces and uh, it came out just fine. Just fine. We, we dropped it and we shot it one handed and you single handed right, single handed left, rapid fire, distance fire, bang, 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 bang. And it performed perfectly fine. I just saw. Now you can't, you cannot buy a gun directly from them. You see, SDS Imports sells their guns. They, they sell them to dealers, and whether it's an online dealer or whether it's an in-person dealer, they sell them to dealers. And you get them from a dealer. You go into the dealer and say, "Hey, I want the new PX9 Gen 3." And they say, "Okay." I just saw one of the online dealers put for Christmas. They put the the PX9 Gen 3 duty pistol on sale for $299.95. That is like stealing that gun. There are so many high quality features in that gun. That's like stealing it. It's, it's akin to stealing that gun. It's that good. I don't know how they're be, how they're able to do it. Maybe it's Christmas magic. I don't know. But uh, yeah, SDS imports the PX9. Uh, generation three pistol uh, is a high quality pistol it's as much or more than you possibly could need or want so uh, check those guys out so and of course you can thank them too yeah for those of you that are going to shot show we've got durko is booth 20127 go by them and say thanks for sponsoring. they're in the 2000 room which where they always are yes uh sds imports is 40810 and uh, MKS Supply, High Point Firearms, Inland Firearms, Bar and All, Ammo. It's a compilation. That's a party right there, buddy. It's 14033. So we will be at all three, of those three. booths at some point during the show. That's right. We'll be moving around. Yeah, like I said before, if you're going to SHOT Show, send an email to info at studentofthegun.com. Include your cell phone number. I will personally text you and set up a meeting time at SHOT Show. There you go, Jared. Unless there's 5,000 people that do that, then well, the, it's just not going to be possible. The meeting, we'll the meeting will be in the Duracoat booth. Group, yeah, group get together. <laughs> the meeting will be in the Duracoat booth. That's where it will be. Uh, so uh, there, you go. there you go. And don't forget about our good friends. We're well, not there yet, but those. Uh, High Point Firearms, uh, that we just talked about them and where they're going to be, and they will be. They promised, and if they didn't, well, I'm going to be sad, but uh, they promised that the new Yeet Cannon will be out and available and it will be featured for public display at the shooting hunting and outdoor trade show so um, oh if you'd like free shipping you can use the the discount code gift 22 at checkout at highpoint.com and you will get free shipping on your order now you, they won't ship you a gun straight to your house but you can order accessories magazines grips optics bags all that kind of stuff and you can get free shipping if you use the promotional code GIFT22 when you check out. So there you go. That's righteous. J-U-X-X-I, Juxi.com is where you want to go. That is where freedom of expression lives, yeah. Un unlike YouTube or Google or whatever. Uh, Juxi, J-U-X-X-I, is not reliant upon Google or YouTube. So they can put stuff up, and if Google and YouTube try and censor it or take it down, then it will still be there because they are not beholden to those liberal scumbag California scumbags. Yes, indeed. So uh, if nothing else, get your butt over to Juxi, J -U -X -X -I, Juxi com and subscribe to the Student of the Gun channel, Student of the Gun on Juxi. It's not that hard. You're a smart person. You can figure it out. All right, let's move on. It's time for me to be quiet. And you, all you new listeners, pay attention to what we're saying. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. 
Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeedy do. Here I are, and here we are, and let's go ahead and move on to the, uh, well, I guess we can, oh, the juicy thing, the follow-up on it. Remember, um, we did a show, and uh, it's called uh, Dead Carjackers, and the dam of lies is breaking. This is where we, well, we pointed out all of the lies told by, to us by the left, by our government, by the media, and YouTube didn't like that. They didn't like us exposing the lies, so they pulled their video down and they put a strike against our account to punish us for, well, exposing the lies. But you can watch that video. You can see it on juxy.com, and you can actually, you're allowed to share that with your friends, family, family, relatives, neighbors, whatever, if you so choose. And I haven't dropped the link in the show notes for you because... I like you guys. All right, let's go there and jump over to Brownells at Brownells.com. Bada, 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 boom. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, you do. Uh, last week, we talked about the uh, Black Rifle Christmas staff picks for the holidays. And we talked about the ugly Christmas sweaters and the Dixon uh, flannel shirts, which I'm wearing today. I'm wearing one of the Dixon uh, flannel shirts, a Brownells tagged one. Uh, but there are other things as well that we did not talk about last week. What we did not talk about last week is we did not talk about the ultimate gunsmithing kit that you can get for your favorite uh, person. It's a standard magnet tip set. And uh, uh, if you don't have one of these multi-tip screwdriver sets you should get one and the the big thing about these sets and, and i've noticed is that uh, if they come in a good case i've got a multi-tip kit uh screwdriver kit and the case broke like a year into me having it and that kind of bummed me out so uh but that's one of the things and and my friends at, at brownells they said hey could you tell your listeners that we're running christmas stuff and i said yes I will tell them that because I am a righteous dude and you are my friends. So, uh, some of the other, they have gifts for under one hundred and fifty dollars. So, if you uh, if you're a listener and you want to get a gift for a friend or a relative or a husband or a whatever, uh, you can go over there and they've got a special selection. It's like less than one hundred fifty dollar gifts. And they've got pieces, parts, components. They've got lower receivers on sale. They have bolt carrier groups, complete bolt carrier groups on sale right now. They have barrels, trigger groups, uh, magazines on sale. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the time. This is when I tell you, this is when I stop and I look at you guys and I tell you, if you need things... This is the time. If you need pieces, parts, components, magazines, whatever, the prices are back down. They're back down, and this is the time for you to secure those. Uh, I do not know what the future is going to hold, but I do not believe that the future is going to, uh, as we come out of the Christmas season, into the new year, into the cold of winter, I just don't see things getting better. Maybe I'm wrong, but if you're waiting, if you're holding back, if you're like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it yet. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait to get my, you know, pieces, parts, bulk carrier groups, whatever. I'm gonna wait. Uh, you can do that. You are an American, and you can do whatever you want. But I don't want to hear any crying uh, when I have to say, I told you so. <laughs> Paul, why would you say I told you so? And, you know, we are in that time of the year where we deliberately allow ourselves to be 
distracted by family stuff and by holiday stuff. And we don't want to think about what's going on in the world. And that's cool. I mean, that's fine. We need to give our brains, uh, you know, give our brains a rest sometimes. I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a good thing. However, when you ignore problems, they just don't fix themselves and go away. When you come back, there they are. They're still there. And what the criminals in Washington, D.C., uh, and the criminals all across the world, they're not doing anything to fix the problems. All they're doing is offering you distraction. That's another thing we didn't actually bring up last week, Jared, was that the, the, the Sniffy Joe, the meat puppet, the criminal meat puppet uh, in Washington, when his handlers commanded him to uh, cut that deal with that, the traitorous lesbian basketball player for an arms dealer, that was done in addition to demoralize the, the enemy, their enemies, which is us. You are their enemy. It was also done as a distraction. It was done as a distraction so that while you were focusing on that, there were other evils being committed by them. So keep that in mind. You got to be smart. You know, when, when, when the right hand is, is dangling in front of you, you need to be smart enough to look over to the left hand and say, all right, what's going on? Why, why are they trying to distract me? What are they doing? that I need to be distracted. And what does this have to do with brownells and pieces and parts and stuff? What I'm telling you is that they're, they've done nothing to secure the border. They've done nothing to secure food production. They've done nothing to secure energy production. They've just ignored all of those things. And you say, well, yeah, but, but those energy production, food production, national security, those things are all just going to automatically fix themselves because Christmas, right? No, I don't think Santa Claus is going to automatically fix those things. So you need to be wise. You need to be one of the wise people and uh, pay attention to the world. And if you need pieces, parts, equipment, whatever, I would highly suggest that you take care of that now versus later. Yeah. If you can give me one downside of being prepared and being self-sufficient, having the things that you need, I would love to hear it. Yeah. I can't think of a single downside to that. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing, as we speak this, I'm seeing 9 millimeter brass case practice ammo dropping below 30 cents. I'm seeing it now dropping into the 20s. Now, it's not 20 cents a piece yet, but I'm seeing it 25, 26, 27 last week during the public episode that Zach and I recorded together, we had, uh, we brought up, there was something on sale at Brownells where there was five, five, six ammo was less than 40 cents a piece. Yep. Less than 40 cents around. And it came with 10 P mags. Yes. I don't know if that's still on sale or not, but Holy cow, that was it. It's, it's a great thing. Get it while it's there. Yes. You know, uh, years and years and years ago before the, the madness, we said that the buy price for practice nine mil was 20 cents a shot and the buy price for two, two, three was 30. That was the, that was the purchase. That was the buy. If you're a stockbroker, you wait till it gets to that point and then buy. Well, um, I don't know if we're going to get back there, but we're getting closer. So the idea, and if you want to train in the, this spring, people are like, well, you know, when, once it gets warm again, I'm going to go to training uh, if you want to train this coming year, this coming summer, this coming spring, the time to buy ammo is now. That's, this is when you buy the ammo that you're going to use to train in the spring and the summer is now, not the week before you go to the training and then try and scramble around and then cry because you couldn't find enough ammo. Oh, we, we do not do enough self-promotion, but if you want to, uh, if you'd like to come with us, <laughs> come along the ride with us, a student of the gun university, we have a rifle class that is, uh, we have actually two rifle classes that are coming up this yep. summer. We have a high elevation precision rifle 
at the end of July of 2023, and we have an advanced high elevation precision rifle, in which is August. At the beginning of August 2023. So it's yep. week one weekend right after the other. If you're interested in doing both, the the high elevation precision rifle is a prereq for the advanced because we don't want to we want to make sure all the students are have the base knowledge so that everybody can move as fast as possible mm -hmm. in the advanced class. Uh, that's where it gets. We don't want to hold people back because they haven't yet received the basic knowledge from um, high elevation precision rifle. So that's a prereq for it. If you want to do both, I highly recommend doing both. Uh, you can take a, a vacation, bring your family out, stay in one of the uh, the places out there in Saratoga uh, during the classes. Whoever has a ticket holder for the class has room and board, food, all of that stuff. Everything's covered. Just bring yourself and your gear and, and we'll make it work for you. But outside of the class, if you're going to stay somewhere and you want to stay for that week in between, there is an awesome place that's nearby. A guy named Dan Pot hosts it. All the information will be sent to you on yep. that after you purchase your ticket for the class. Yep. And the reason I bring that up is because, well, if you're going to shoot a rifle class, you're going to need ammunition for your rifle. And the time to start securing that ammunition for your rifle is now. Yes. Not two weeks before the class. So there you go. All if you want right. more information on that, the pages aren't even public yet. Uh, they're still circling around the grad program. And so once they do that, once the grad program people have their chance to book their seats, then we'll release them to the public. You can go to SOTGU.com, put in your information, your email there. And then when we launch the public version of the class, then we will send it to you. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. ShopSOTG.com. Zach, do you have a specific thing you want to talk about today? Uh, not particularly just as the last episode of the year, question mark? I think so. The last public episode, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Last so. public episode of the year. Yeah. I just want to let you all know that we will be having, uh, I don't know if we would call it a shakeup, a revamp, whatever. The store is going to get a bunch of cool stuff, and some stuff's going to change on the store in the coming new year. So look forward to that at shopsotg.com. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. Now, Jerry, awesome. you can do your thing. Now we've got, right now, you don't have to wait for this. Right now, we have the Advent Counter giveaway promotion going for you guys. I'm not sure what date this is airing on. 1220, the 20th. So it's the 20th day of the giveaway which we're starting to get into the really cool prizes now so go to sotggiveaway.com to uh, sign up for that get all the information there's some social media things that you have to do again you don't have to have all of the social media platforms that we talk about on there you just have to share it on the one that you already use and you also don't have Everyone to knows. sign up again every day yeah you just uh, you can if you want to if you just want to make sure that you've got your email in there every single day you can do that totally, totally, whatever you can do that. Totally fine. Um, but if you don't want to do that, then you only have to go to sotggiveaway.com and put in your info, your email address and an address that we're going to ship prizes to and whatnot one time, and then it'll be there. So do that. The advent calendar giveaway that's sotggiveaway.com for that. You can get more information there. Um, I haven't talked about this previously. I wish I would have because it's already the 20th of December. <laughs> But every single year we do the something that's called the Living Christmas. A buddy of mine here in um, in Utah runs a charity that helps provide Christmases for families that are in need this year. And so what the way they do it is a little bit different. They actually pair families with people that are, are willing to provide Christmas for those families. So they have a vetting process. They make sure that all the people that are going to be receiving Christmas from other people are actually in need and not taking advantage of the not system. Crackheads. Yeah. And, um, and, and then there's families that volunteer to be paired with these families. So what we actually get to do is interact with the families we call and see what, you know, what do they have kids? If they have kids, most of them do. What do the kids need? Clothes, food, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we try to make sure that the kids actually have something fun as well. So it's not just the needs for the kids, but also toys that they can enjoy. and Like slinkies. And whatnot. Yeah, slinkies. That's right. So the reason that I bring this up is because I like to get you guys involved every year if you're willing to do so. Um, if you don't have somebody in your local community that you can serve, 
this is something that you can do in the giving season to uh, help provide for a family in need that we know is a family in need. And uh, we will actually be personally delivering the gifts to them. So if you're interested in helping with that, uh, we've got a, a shopping team assembly assembled. All we are asking for is your help with funding the shopping spree for this family. Uh, and you totally, you don't have to do this. It's one of those things that if you're interested in it, this is just an avenue to do so. Uh, we can take care of it by ourselves, no problem. But we have had people in the past ask, it's like, hey, can I help with that? And it's like, absolutely. If you want to help with it, go ahead and do that. Send an email to info at studentofthegun.com and I'll get you some more information on how to send the funds to the right place. And Jared promises to check that email. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kayla's checking it every day. Oh, so Kayla, thank you check it, for checking it. She gets me the things that are important. Ah, good. So, um, yeah, I'm, I was freaking cold. Put my sweatshirt on. You put foggy cold. Yeah. You, you, I'm not going to apologize for being cold. <laughs> I'm not, I'm I didn't say you had grade. to apologize. Freaking. So, uh, all it, right. It is pretty chilly down here. Yeah, it's cold in this part of the basement. I could be naked. It'd be fine. That's perfect. No. All right. It's time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Ulster's Dead Gov. That's dangerous by Madison Rising, and that is the uh, well. That's the theme for this. It's a dangerous on demand. How can you be dangerous on demand? Well, actually, carry your freaking gun. How about that for an idea? Uh, and if you go to crossbreedholsters.com, uh, or if you go to studentofthegun.com slash crossbreed, enter the promotional code SOTG. That way, they know that you're listening and paying attention. Oh, we got word that it does not work on overstock items. Doesn't work on overstock. Yeah, which dot is, com, which is totally fair because those are always less expensive. Yeah, well, already uh, less expensive. So if you're using the code and it doesn't work, it's because the product that you're picking is probably is not already discounted. It's already discounted. It's probably not eligible for the code. They can't just so give away stuff. Yeah. Away. So so before you contact their customer service and say, hey, this code's not working, just check another product, check one of their retail products or whatever yeah. that are not discounted and make sure that it works there. That's if you're fair. having that problem and it doesn't work, then contact their customer service and say, hey, yeah. this isn't working. That's fair. Uh, we can only ask so much of these guys. We can't, I mean, they, yeah. they got to pay their employees. They can't just like give you stuff for free. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there are margins and it's a business. And, and they're a business. The purpose and, of the business all is all right. So there you go. All right, they're already doing. They're doing you a favor. They're making hundred percent made in the USA gear uh, by good people, and they do give you a discount. So, let's go ahead and go to the story. It's about well, not only it's important to be dangerous on demand in your noodle, in your mind mindset. What is the t the number one of the four pillars of combat? Is mindset. mindset. There we go. And this, and I'm going to go ahead and say this person probably had the mindset based on well the story uh, just just what little i know about it and jared's going to share that with us right now this is from las vegas nevada LVNV. fox 5 on your side woman shoots kills alleged carjacking suspect with his own gun las vegas nevada this is from december 7th 2022 a suspected carjacker how okay a suspected i'm carjacker. just gonna i'm just gonna read this Okay. I was like trying to figure out how it could be suspected carjacker. But he's yeah. dead right there. And then yeah, I go, like, okay, the, well. the lady used his own gun on him. Yeah. It's like uh, a suspected carjacker in Las Vegas is dead after police say the woman he was attempting to carjack shot and killed him with his own gun. That is so bad. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> North Las Vegas PD. Oh, and North Las Vegas. What do you know, know about North Las Vegas? Yeah, we know that that's, that's, that's the, hood. the place, buddy. That's be the hood. Uh, they said the woman who was not identified told them that she went to pick up a friend on the way to do a Thanksgiving event on November 19th. When the two arrived at the party, they decided to wait in the car due to being early. According to an arrest report obtained by KWU, this is the news station here, the woman noticed a vehicle approaching quickly and uh, a vehicle quickly approaching her car while she and a friend waited. The other car stopped directly in front of the woman's vehicle and two men got out with guns pointing at the woman and her friend. The woman said that two men yelled at her and her friend, telling them to get out of the car. One of the men reportedly opened the driver's side door and pulled her out of the car by the shirt. 
one of the suspects reportedly got into the car but struggled to get the car into drive due to the vehicle requiring a button to be pressed to drive it. And that, that is something with modern cars. It's like people are having these criminals have to be smarter than they usually were. Or, it's, well, or get a standard. Yeah, while he struggled with the vehicle, the driver put his gun on his lap. Mistake number one. Or was mistake number one mm. selecting the wrong victim? The other suspect climbed into the passenger seat. After the woman told her friend to run, she told detectives she grabbed the gun from the first suspect's lap and ran. Police said the suspect chased after the woman and tackled her a few seconds later. The report said that the woman was unable to get the man to let her go. So and she shot him. She shot him with his gun. She should have shot him. She should have grabbed it out of his lap and blasted him right there in the driver's seat. Good dang thing that it was actually loaded. Yeah. Uh, detective said that she told them she wasn't sure if she shot the man once or twice. Doesn't matter. Yeah, of course she wasn't. The second suspect started shooting at the woman, according to the report, and the woman ran into a house and hid in the side yard. And this this is one of those things where that in and of itself could have been dangerous because you like as the homeowner, you got somebody in your side yard with a, a gun mm. and you're like, that is a person that might rob me, but it's really oh. the good guy. Yeah. The woman said that the gun she had was jammed, so she fixed it. Good job. No, no, no. What? Yeah, she so said. So she fixed it. Yeah, she also said she heard the second suspect say his friend was shot. Police eventually arrived at the scene. And eventually. The, and the woman, <laughs> like, how they put that in there. That's always it. Uh, eventually. Police she, eventually. She came up after and, a while. And approached police. The report said that the woman was put in handcuffs at the scene, but was later told that she was not under arrest. It's like, yeah, you got to figure out who's who. Yeah. Arriving. And that's normal. Yeah. Arriving officers said that they found a dead man lying in the street and bleeding <laughs> from his head. All right. According yeah. To the report, the man was wearing a black ski mask, jacket, and jeans. Put two and two together, I guess. Yeah. On December 2nd, North Las Vegas police said that officers located uh, Jalen Morrison and took him into custody. I guess that was. That'd be the, the uh, accomplice. The arrest report said that Morrison was linked to a vehicle of interest. Officers discovered at a scene of the shooting. Detectives determined Morrison was a known associate to the man, uh, to the to the two men. So it wasn't the second guy. Mm -hmm. The woman encountered in November. They said that he cased the victims, locked their car with his, and that the two other suspects got out of the car with the intent to steal the woman's car. So there were three total. Yeah, Morrison had been charged with second degree kidnapping, Has conspiracy, been, yeah, yeah. Uh, conspiracy to commit robbery, attempted robbery with a deadly weapon, burglary with the use of a deadly weapon, and attempted grand larceny of a vehicle. Authorities are continuing to look for other suspects involved in the case. Mm. Good on this lady. That's awesome. Yeah, She's good honor. On demand with her mind. Yes. yes. Now, to be fair. Uh, it would have been she'd have been better off if she would have actually been armed. But but good honor for it. I'm, I'm guessing that this woman has some type of experience with firearms based on the fact that uh, she knew to grab it and she actually was able to fix it. She said it was jammed. It was probably jammed because it was pushed against the guy. Yeah, that's I would say because it was in close. part. Remember, we talked about contact shooting the other day. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a really good theory there. Yeah. That's probably what, what messed it up. So, she, so those she, of you guys that have never done contact shooting, what happens is the, it essentially becomes out of battery. So you get one shot and it's out of battery because the, the slide was pushed back and it couldn't recoil, right? Yeah. So it couldn't do the thing that it needs to do yeah. to load another bullet in there. And so what you have to do is you have to tap it and rack it, tap it rack get it. another bullet in that sucker and then it's good to go. Oh, speaking of tapping and racking, <sighs> Oh, I had a recommended video. I had a recommended video today, and it was from Should not have an watched organization it. that we know. Huh. Um, and the guy, what? All right, what the f First is question. going on? First question: Were you surprised mm, at the outcome of the video? Kind of. I was. Okay. I was hoping because James actually, it was a. Don't say who it was. I'm not going to. Okay. Don't give any hints. No. Well, okay. it, it was. It was the reason I w hit play was because James invited the guy who runs this organization to come on his podcast and talk to him. Yeah. So James had given him a yeah. So I thought, okay, well, this guy's kind of been pre-approved. 
So I'm going to watch this video. And it was a guy, right? What is it up? What is up with these tactical guys? I hate using the term tactical, but when you take your glasses, first of all, when you turn your hat around backwards and then take your glasses and put them up on top of your head, what the F is that? That's what you do. That's how you protect yourself from flying casings. What? Why? What? Why you are the glasses the gla on your head? You no, know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to put them on your face because then the 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 hot spent shell casing could get in between your eyeball and the glasses, and it's just stuck there. So you need to put the glasses up on your head. It it's it's just it's just so. It's like when we were watching that show last night, and those. Yeah. Sec hot, those security people all had their their super cool gargoyle glasses or whatever on their hats. I'm maybe I'm just an old man and I don't understand the purpose of having your glasses on top of your hat. I just explained it. How can you not so, understand oh, that? So dumb. But you know we have people that are listening that are like, uh, you should not talk about putting your eye protection on top of your hat. Because people are going to do it. I'm like, well, then they're dumb. Oh, I say, like, put it over, you know, it's, I don't even, I don't know. But he, he said he was going to do it. He was doing a video about how to, ad, how to administratively load your gun. I'm like, okay. And rather than say, do it like this, he said, well, you can do it like this. Or if you want, do it like this. Or, or if, if you feel like it, you can do it like this. Yeah. And I thought, there then, are many different ways to do. There's things. many different ways to do this. So like, why did I need to watch you on a video? If you're just going to say, well, just do it. However you feel comfortable, like figure it out. Like I could have done that without watching your video. I could have just figured it out without your expert advice yeah <laughs> so what did you just teach me you're like Three well ways to do the same thing yeah it's like well, you can do it this way and, you can do it this way reason, for those this of you way. that are listening the reason that that's not a good thing is because if you teach yourself three different ways to do the same thing then when you're when your brain when you're in uh crisis brain, mode crisis mode then you're gonna have to cycle through those options before you do the action and the best thing that you can do is is remove that friction because when you're in crisis mode you want to be able to do the thing as fast as you possibly can so what you would hope to be able to do is remove the thinking out of it because when you're in crisis mode you do not you no longer have use of your prefrontal cortex so now you need to be able to do the action without thinking well if you insert three different ways to do something you're making yourself have to think if you teach yourself teaching training three different way, ways to do one thing in a crisis, in an adrenaline dump, when, the, when you're using lizard brain, right? In a crisis, you're going to either vapor lock and then just sit there trying to think, well, in, wh which one should I do? Or you're going to have to like, go through a battery. Just, just learn, master one way to do something and do it that way and master that way so that way you don't have to think. Uh, about it and this is a very real story like she says she told officer she didn't know how many times she fired the gun that's absolutely true you should never even offer an answer if like, how many how many shots did you fire your answer should be i don't know what do you mean you don't know well first of all if a cop says that to you they're a freaking tool bag that's more reason to just shut up yeah it's like here i'm gonna tell you all you want to know in the presence of an attorney that's why you say happy to speak with you i'm injured you i need to go to the hospital what i will do that as soon as my attorney gets here what no um that's that's actually in the in the, the upcoming book like look if you've been in a fight if you've been attacked if you've been knocked to the ground if someone grabbed you shoved you whatever if noise was if loud noises were made chances are you're hurt and you may be hurt and not really know it. This is when people that don't know anything say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you are hurt, you'd absolutely know it. No, you won't, because adrenaline is more powerful than morphine as a painkiller. 
you could be injured. You could be badly injured and not realize it until you calm down and your blood pressure comes back down and the adrenaline wears off. And then you realize, holy crap, I broke my arm. I broke my wrist. Uh, I'm stabbed. I'm bleeding. I'm whatever. If you've been in a physical altercation, chances are really good that you are injured in some fashion. The cop doesn't need to know when they, when they pull up, when they show up and the, you know, the noise is stopped and the fight is, you know, that part of the fight's ended. They don't need to know what you had for breakfast that day. They don't need to know how many shots you fired. They don't need to know any, they don't need to know anything. They need to know. And I've said this many, 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 many times as a, when you respond as a cop, the most important things you're trying to figure out, you get, you got a radio call. Shots fired. This is where you need to go. That's all you need to know. Someone called and they're like, people are shooting other people. Go there. So you go there. You need to figure out who's going to the hospital, who's going to the morgue, and who's going to jail. And in what order? And are there people still running around who need to be shot? And then you go back to the hospital morgue jail thing, right? So when you get there, are people still running around with guns shooting other people? Yes, no, maybe. All right. Who's going to the hospital? Who's going to the morgue? Who's going to jail? That's the only thing you need to figure out right then at that moment. All of the other stuff, you've got the, the until the end of time to figure out the caliber of the gun and the number of shell casings on the ground and the you know, what they had for breakfast that day and what their alias is. And you have until the rest of the end of the world to figure that crap out. you got all kinds of time. So remember that if you're ever involved in a gunfight and you survive, you probably are injured. And the best thing for you to do when responding officers show up is to say, I've been injured. I want to go to the hospital. Let the doctor once your adrenaline has worn off, let the medical professionals tell you whether or not you're okay. Because you're probably not going to know. They're like, oh, no, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'd absolutely know that. No, you won't. <laughs> Michael Platt was dead. And he didn't know it yet. Michael Platt was dead and walked around and shot three and killed two, killed two and shot three more FBI agents in Miami. And he was dead walking. He wasn't going to leave that scene alive. Was not going to happen. He made that decision before he even started. Yeah. He, he was in, he was not going to leave there alive, but, and he was dead man walking and then literally, and he still was able to accomplish killing two and wounding three. So the idea that you're like, no, if, if I'm in a, if you're, if you're in an adrenaline dump fight for your life situation, there, it is very likely that you have been injured in some form or fashion and do not know it. You're better off having a medical professional who is calm and who was not there at the scene, examine you and say, okay, this is, this is what we found. You're otherwise you're okay. You can go now. You're way better off doing that than just trying to say, you know, men do this all the time. Oh, I'm fine. And it's like, no, you're actually not fine. All right. So good job. Go team moment. Uh, they're in Las Vegas. Yes, indeed. And I need to, I need to clarify something. Right P.S. Now. North, North Las Vegas is the ghetto. Stay out of it. Uh, Nick Miller said when we were talking about the, Gun being out of batteries, said put your thumb on the back of the slide and put it back in battery, then pull the trigger and rack it. Uh, there are better ways to do that. Um, but I need to make sure that I, because I had said something about it. What makes it out of battery is the fact that the slide is slid back. So you have to put it back in battery and then pull the trigger. Yeah. And then that's when you have, you've got your one shot done. And because you were pushing on the back of the slide, I'd recommend putting your whole hand back there, not just a the thumb. If you're, able to do that but like like pretty much everything if you're in a situation where you've got to use it your situation is very unique 
right? So you, if you've only got one hand, how are you supposed to put a, your left hand on the back of it or whatever? So, but the point is you have to put something back there. Training. If you have both hands, then the best way to do Training. that is, is to do the both hand thing. And then uh, now that you've pulled the trigger, you have to rack it because the slide would not recoil yeah. because you're pushing it forward. Yeah. You, you learn all these things by going to training. Yes, for sure. So that way you're not trying to make it up on the spot. <laughs> well, I'm a smart person. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll be able to figure it out if I ever need to. Yeah, I, I love that. My, that's one of my favorite things in the world is when people say, I'm a smart person. I'll, if I ever have to do that, I'll know what to do. No, you won't. All right. Uh, now without training. All right. So uh, the last one is the, uh, this is from the communist news network.com. Cause it was the most convenient link. This, this absolutely should infuriate all of you out there in the audience. You, this should infuriate you because one year ago, it was absolutely critical that we poison our troops, even though based on the evidence that we had, we had the evidence that we had was that people who are young, physically fit, healthy, normally healthy people don't die from COVID. Yes, COVID is a real disease that was created in a Chinese lab and was released on the world by Chicoms. I never said it wasn't. But the reality is young, physically fit people, children, 20-somethings, whatever, don't die from COVID. They never did. Unless they got a motorcycle accident, then they died of COVID. Or unless they had, you know, they had cancer, then they died of COVID. But Here's what we know and what we knew at the time. We knew that the, the military is filled with what? Young, physically fit, adult humans, because they have to be physically fit adult humans to be in the military, right? When, when I found out, when I heard that that criminal meat puppet was going to force them to take this mystery shot, I knew we were screwed. It, it made me sick to my stomach. And if you listen to doctors who are willing to speak out against the establishment, if you will listen to the, num the numerous whistleblowers from within the military, and this has been going on for a whole year, they'll tell you, we've got people, we've got young men and women that were perfectly healthy we forced them to take this shot, and now they're sick. Now they're infirm. Now they're in a position where they can't even perform their jobs. And what about the ones who were smart and courageous and refused to take the shot? Their, their careers, officers, enlisted men, were ruined. They're disciplined. They're kicked out of the military. Why? All for what? Well, we got it right here. What's, what's the headline? What's the news? The new Defense Authorization Act, the new defense bill, umpteen bajillion dollars. Coming and, from somewhere. Yep. We're just going to print House money. House passes bill that rescinds military COVID, COVID vaccine mandate. The House voted on Thursday. to. I like how they put that as the title when the primary thing is for the DOD. But this got a lot more people to watch it or view it, I'm for sure. The House voted on Thursday to pass sweeping legislation that would authorize $858 billion in national defense funding and rescind the U.S. Military COVID, U.S. military's COVID vaccine mandate. The measure passed with bipartisan support, wide bipartisan support, with a tally of 350 to 80. So 80 wow, criminals. Actually, There's 80 criminals in the House. People are actually getting... Uh, getting on like agreeing with each other that's crazy. 80 criminals think that we should poison your kids your children that are in the army and the navy house lawmakers approved the final negotiation version of the national defense authorization act for fiscal year 2023 which sets a policy agenda and authorizes funding for the department of defense 
following passage in the House, the measure will obviously next need to go to the Senate to be approved before it can be sent to President Joe Biden to be signed into law. As part of its $858 billion top line for national defense funding, the measure authorizes $817 billion specifically for the DOD. The massive bill includes a vast number of policy provisions. Among them, it would authorize a 4.6% pay raise for 4.6% pay raise for military service members. It includes provisions to strengthen air power and land warfare defense capabilities, as well as cybersecurity. It also aims to bolster U.S. support for Ukraine and NATO. The provision to rescind the military's COVID vaccine mandate comes after congressional Republicans pushed for its repeal. In a statement Tuesday night, House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy said that the end of President Biden's military COVID vaccine mandate is a victory for our military and for common sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop right there. Here's the deal, though. How many millions of active duty military members have already been poisoned? You can we can you unring a bell? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how far back that goes. But it, it's been said, you cannot unring a bell. So what do we do? Now, what, is the, what does the Defense Department do after it forced out the people who refused? After they drum them out dishonorably? Obviously, it wasn't that important. It's not a life-saving measure. So what do we do now? Do they apologize to these people? It's kind of like the, uh, the companies that fired employees, terminated employees for refusing to take the poison. And then they, they, they you know, after a year or six months or nine months or whatever, then they quietly just drop their poison shot mandate what what do those employees do do they they get compensated uh what happened in new york a federal judge ruled what or is this federal or state supreme court judge ruled that new york had to reinstate with back pay the people that they forced out of their jobs for not getting the poison shot i think that was a state it was new york state yeah I'm i think it was the state supreme court said that uh, they had to that new york city had to reinstate those people with pay uh that they fired but ladies and gentlemen what do we do now can you unring the bell is this too little too late do you know what decimation is what is the uh what is the definition of decimation What is, where does it come from? Do you remember? Decimation. It comes from the, uh, the Roman military discipline in which every 10th man of the group was executed. This was a harsh, super strict punishment. It was called decimation. And deca meaning 10. So one of every 10 or a 10th. They just committed decimation against the United States military by poisoning the troops. Not only did they poison the troops, but the troops that were smart enough to refuse are now gone. They forced them out. America, your military is fornicated. It doesn't matter how much money they spend. See, you can spend all the money you want. How do you recover from the damage that has been done? How does our military recover from the damage that was done, that was started in the Obama administration? Obama started with the war against the U.S. military. How do you recover from it? Can we recover from it? They're like, oh, well, we're going to spend all this money. Look at all the money we're going to spend. Yeah. How, how does that bring back 
all of those season. See, during the Obama administration, I was there. I was involved with the active duty military. I saw it happening. With their political correctness, wokeness, their gender sensitivity, racial this, the, all this garbage that the White House, through the Department of Defense, forced onto the military. What happened was you had seasoned NCOs and officers who were intelligent, motivated self-starters who looked at the situation and said, I don't need to be a part of this fornication show here. I don't need to be a part of this goat rodeo. The military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, whatever, it's become a goat rope, right? They looked and they're like, I don't need this Mickey Mouse horse crap. And they got out. As soon as they get out, they got out. I know literally, personally, dozens of guys who were seasoned military veterans, experienced NCOs, officers, who all said, you know what? I don't need this crap. I didn't join the military to be part of your weird social experimentation. I'm out of here. Bye. Obama gutted the the general and admiral staff of the military anybody who was who was no longer a anybody who was not a political yes man is gone i mean look what they look what obama and his criminal regime did to generals they they put them on trial they 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 destroyed the officer corps of our military that's why when the Sniffy Joe, the meat puppet, got in and decided that he was going to force this poison, this untested poison onto our soldiers and sailors, that's why the General Corps and the Admiral Corps didn't fight him on it. They folded like a house of cards because they'd already stacked the General Corps, the General Staff, with a bunch of political yes-men. They knew that they would do what they're told, that they would punish their soldiers and sailors for failing to obey, for, get, for failing to get in line to be poisoned. How do you unring the bell? And the question everyone needs to ask is why? So if the shots were, remember, 18 months ago, the lie was perfectly safe. If you get this shot, you won't get sick. Right, Zach? Exactly. We have a video. We have a video of all the, quote, world leaders telling us, standing in, uh, at podiums, looking out at their subjects and lying, telling them, just get the shot. You won't get sick. It'll keep you healthy. Six, nine months later, those exact same people. Well, you know, I've I've been diagnosed as positive, but it's okay. Well, hang on a second. You said you looked at us and said, get the shot. You won't get sick. It's perfectly safe. It's 100% effective. Now you're saying it's not perfectly safe. It's not 100% effective. Were you lying then or are you lying now? Or have you been lying the entire time? You should be, as a, as a citizen of the United States, you should be mad. You should be angry as hell. You should be beyond angry that your government would put your sons and daughters lives in danger that they would permanently damage them with this untested shot what is the future of this nation you allowed a dementia riddled meat puppet to order the decimation look it up if you haven't looked it up yet the decimation of the united states military where do we go from there? 
How do you unring the bell? Is this it's too little too late? And what do you as a citizen do? And can you do anything? Ah, that's the good news though. You see ladies and gentlemen, unlike Russia, China, Venezuela, you fill in the blank, New Zealand, Australia, See, unlike all of these other countries that are 100% reliant upon their government's military for national defense, there's one country on planet Earth that's not. And it's called the United States of America. I was going to say Chechnya. Yeah. Not Chechnya. Um, why would you say Chechnya? Because I like the word. <laughs> yeah, there's and you're like, oh no, Israel. <clears throat> the uh, the Israeli government set about the decimation and destruction of the country of Israel. They poisoned their citizens, almost down to a man. Israel is in, I would say in 10 years, Israel is going to fall. The, the Palestinians, see, I don't believe that most of the Arab nations, because the Arab nations generally are kind of spooky about stuff like that. They don't trust Western medicine. <laughs> Turns out for a good reason. <laughs> Turns out they were actually kind of smart about that, not trusting us. Um, yeah, Israel is going to, uh, within 10 years, fold. It'll be. It'll be. It'll still exist technically, uh, but it's going to be overpowered by its neighbors. They're going to overpower it and just and uh, and decimate it to a, basically a shadow. And it's their own fault. Their own fault. I can, You know, it, it's it's sad to me, but uh, you, you know, you get what you pay for. Fortunately, there's only one. There is one country in the world that is not a hundred percent reliant upon a government-sponsored military for defense yes. and that's the united states of america that is why they're working so hard to disarm you because you are the impediment as an armed american citizen you are in the way of this great reset you are in the way of progress the progress of enslaving the entire world you're in the way and they need to get, they need to broom you. Yet make no mistake about that. Every single day, more and more of their lies are exposed. The lies about the masks, the lies about the origins of COVID, the lies about the shots. All of those lies are being exposed every single day. And every single day, rather than doing the responsible thing, Rather than the government doing the responsible thing and actually investigating and exposing those lies, what they're doing instead is they're doubling down on their attempt to disarm you. Why? What is it about their agenda that requires you to be disarmed? That is a legitimate question. It's what you should be asking every day. And will you, knowing that your, gov that your military has been decimated, will you surrender your arms? And what happens then? What happens if you surrender your arms? What happens to the United States of America as a country when the military has been decimated and the people are disarmed? Well, our enemies won't do anything. Our enemies will respect us and love us. Mm-hmm. Questions, comments, concerns. I see that the Discord is burning up there. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. The channels. We don't have anything. Mm. No Nothing. questions. Okay. No, no, questions. no questions. No questions, no comments, concerns. Well, there's a bunch of comments, but they're, not, got, but they're not in relation to. We've got channel. homesteading channels. We've got reloading channels. We've got leadership channels. We've got. May May channels. Seal carry channels. We've got, yeah, May May channels. So May May. Drop May May's everywhere else. But yeah, there's all kinds of different. The Red stuff Panda. There. If you are a 
not a grad program member, go to getsotg.com, join the grad program. We're not going to do if that. If you Mike. are already a grad program member or you've just joined, which means you're already one, you can go log into your student lounge dashboard and there's a button there that'll allow you to request access to the Discord server. Do that and then you'll be in there. You can partake in discussions about homesteading and reloading and there's even a trading post in there. So if you yeah. guys are interested in that. Oh, that's cool. Where's the trading post at? Down here. Oh, is there anything good on it right now? Maybe I should start putting stuff on the trading post. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> actually, I'm actually not joking. Me neither. I'm actually not joking. I've got, I have stuff. I have Rubbermaid bins full of things and stuff and junk. Is there anything in there that's 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 good right now? It's gonna be wanted. Is there any wanted? Uh, Three hundred eight Winchester die set. A couple of die sets. Uh, Bullets, projectiles, oh, yeah, reloading stuff, projectiles, uh, all kinds of stuff. That looks like a, a J frame. It's a spring kit. Spring kit for J -frame. Wilson Combat Spring Kit. There you go. Well, look, good job. Good on you guys. That's exactly what I want you guys to do. I, I want you to use the the Discord for stuff like that. There you go. There you go. Good job. So, and the more people on the Discord, uh, the better. Cool so stuff. if you go to uh, studentofthegun.com slash discord, jump into there so you can kibitz with your friends and like-minded individuals and, and so on and so forth. So is there anything else you guys want to say? Cause this is the last one before the Christmas break. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Merry happy Christmas Hanukkah and happy new year. year. They're celebrating Hanukkah. Um, I think that's it. Thank you for being here. We appreciate all you guys. Yep. Yep. Yes, indeed. And, and, uh, uh, just keep up with us on the, if you want to, you can keep up with us on the socialist, the various socialist media and, uh, uh, congratulations and good luck to all of you guys out there, uh, in the, in the audience, um, on winning the, uh, the, all of the good stuff, the cool stuff from, and somebody is really going to be like the crazy winner. Cause they're going to get a G lock product that has previously been not available to the public it's going to be a brand new g-lock product and uh so and that's all i can say that's all i can say right now is it's going to be a brand new previously unavailable g-lock product and you want to be one of the students of the gun who gets that so uh go to sotggiveaway.com sign up and maybe you could be a winner you might i don't know a lot of you are a lot of you guys are all it takes is a little bit of effort so. You can go to sotggiveaway.com, join that stuff, and uh, you get all the information there. Yes, indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, uh, all my friends and neighbors, thank you for being here. And remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.